find an area under a curve like y equals f of x uh, over some interval a to b, you may remember from sort of the beginning of the chord that we uh, divided up the interval into small little pieces and then on each of those intervals we would approximate the area on that interval with a little rectangle. And then we set up a uh, where the area of each of those little rectangles was the width of the interval, which was our delta x, and the height of the rectangle was given by the function value at any given x value. So this was like x1, x2, etc. Um, we could then approximate the area using a summation, and then in the limit, we turn this into the integral of the function over uh, the integral of the function uh, from a to b. Now, when you look at this, the what we're really saying here is the function value, right, the height of the rectangle times dx, where dx here is now some infinitesimally tiny little uh, width. But we still have the same idea, height times width, area of a rectangle, uh, being added up from uh, a to b. Okay, so we really think of this as slicing up an area uh, into a bunch of little pieces. And so that's how we did it there. Uh, we can then extend that idea to more complicated functions. So for example, if we had two functions, let's say some f of x function and some g of x function, and we had some interval a to b here, Suppose we wanted to find the area here, between the two curves, bounded by those curves. So there's two ways we can think about that. One is we could imagine a large area under the f of x function, and then a smaller area under the g of x function, right? So we can imagine large area, and then this smaller area under the g of x function, and think of this area as the difference between those. So that would be the integral of f of x dx for the large area, and then subtract from that the area under the smaller function, and this would work just fine. Uh, but another way to think about this is to think of it as slicing up the area into a bunch of little pieces. So we can imagine slicing this up into bunches of little slices, where each slice is some little tiny change of x, y. Now, if we were going to be very formal, we would use delta x here and then take a limit, but we're going to be a little sloppy. So the width of this is some tiny little change of x, and then the height of this rectangle is the difference of those y values, right? So if the y value here was 10 and the y value here was 6, then the height of this would be 4, right? The difference of the y values. And so the height of this is the difference between the two function values. So then the area of the slice, so the area of the slice is the height times some tiny little width. And then the total area we would find by adding up all those tiny little slices. So we have all these tiny little f of x minus g of x slices and we're adding them up from a to b. Okay? So let's take a look at, let's do an actual example with this now. So let's imagine we have the curves y equals x squared and the curve y equals 4 minus x squared, and then the vertical axis here, uh, the vertical axis here, uh, x equals 0. And we want to find the area of this region, the region bounded by these four, the, these three curves. So we can imagine slicing up here, where the width is dx, and then the height is, again, the difference between the functions. So on the top, we have 
the 4 minus x squared function, and on the bottom we have the x squared function. Again, given any x value, the y value here is x squared, the y value here is 4 minus x squared. We're finding the difference between those. And so the area of a slice would be 4 minus x squared minus x squared, that's 4 minus 2x squared, that's the height, times dx the width, and we're adding that up from our starting point, which is 0, to wherever that is. Now notice we're going to have to do some work here. We need to figure out where these two curves intersect. So we can set 4 minus x squared equal to x squared. And we get two solutions, plus or minus square root of 2. This one must be the positive square root. And there's the integral that will give us that area. Now, in this case, we were slicing vertically. But there's no reason we have to limit ourselves to slicing vertically. So imagine a case now where we have some kind of function where x is a function of y rather than y being a function of x. So here, if we were trying to find the area, say, from a y value of a to a y value of b, so we're trying to find the area here, slicing this vertically would be very challenging. But if we draw in a slice horizontally, then things become fairly easy. So here, y now is determining the location of our slice. The thickness of our slice is dy, and then the width is given by this function, because the x value here is 0, the x value here is given by the function. The difference between them gives the width of my slice, and so the area of my slice is h of y dy, and so the total area will be the integral from a to b, h of y dy. So notice we're integrating with y here instead of x because we're slicing horizontally. Now, you can probably imagine where we're going to go with this now. Suppose now we added in a second function. So imagine we had not only some function uh, x equals h of y, but also a second function here, some x equals k of y function. And we want to find the area between those curves from a y value of a to a y value of b. Well, same idea. We're going to slice horizontally at a given y value. The thickness of the slice is some dy. Here, the x value is given by the h function. Here, the x value is given by the k function. And so the width of this interval will be the k function as the larger x value minus h, the smaller y uh, x value. So the area of the slice will be the width times the height, some little dy here from a to b.